The first step of the design recipe is to write data definitions. This is a particularly important step because all the other steps depend on it. So far in this class, you've seen both simple kinds of data definitions with just one case, as well as more complex data definitions that have multiple cases. Today, we're going to be focusing on a particular kind of multi-case data definitions. That's when each case simply specifies one particular value. So the data definition simply enumerates all the possible values that the kind of data could have. These data definitions are called enumerations. You have actually already seen a data definition that is an enumeration because Booleans are defined as an enumeration. There are only two possible values, true and false. But today, let's look at something a little bit more interesting. Let's look at traffic lights, like those you could find in the streets outside our school. A simple traffic light has three colors and only three colors. So we can write a data definition to represent the color of a traffic light. And that can be used, for example, to animate the traffic light in action. Let's call this data definition traffic light. And we can just list the three traffic lights in terms of how we would represent the colors. A simple way to represent a light is to use the color as a string. So I'm going to use a string, red, yellow, or green, to represent the colors. So that's our data definition. Let's now write a function to draw a traffic light. So we need to write the signature, purpose, and header of such a function. I'm going to call this function draw TL. TL is short for traffic light. And the function is going to take a traffic light as input and return an image. In order to write a header for this function, we need to assign a name to the input, which is a traffic light. So TL is a good name for short. Next, we need to write the examples. Now, whenever we write a function that has many cases for its input, here the input has three cases, we need to provide examples for all the cases. So we need to write examples for what happens when this function gets red as input and yellow and green. Now, because the expected output in each of these cases is an image, we need to provide images as the example outputs. And because images can be a little bit tricky to produce, I highly recommend that whenever you need to produce an image, you do it in a new blank tab. In a new blank tab, you have fewer distractions and you can focus on making the image before copying your work back to whatever main program you're working on. Okay. So we're going to use the image library to produce this image. Let's first draw a background, this dark black vertical bar where the traffic lights can sit. Uh, a good function to use from the image library is the rectangle function. This function takes four inputs. It takes a width, let's say 100, and then the height, 300 will be a good number because it's three times 100 and we need room for all three lights. Uh, and then it takes a string, which is either solid or outline. So here we need a solid rectangle that is black, like that. Okay, so that's a good um, image to have as a starting point. Let's give it a name. I'm going to copy it into the definitions window. And let's call it uh, background, I guess. Okay. Now we need a light, for example, a red light. Uh, we can use a circle function to do that. Uh, it takes as input a radius. So uh, 40 will be a good radius because it's going to uh, produce a circle whose diameter is 80. So it's going to fit inside a rectangle whose width is 100. And then it needs two more inputs, this circle function. Uh, the second input is a string, which again could be either solid or outline. Here we need a solid red circle like that. And now, by chaining the circle function with the place image function, we could place the circle image on top of the background. So I'm going to use place image. And 
uh, if you recall, place image takes four inputs. The first input is what to put on top that image. And then the second input is the x coordinate where that circle should be put. We're going to put the circle in the background. The background is 100 wide, so we're going to put it at x equals 50. So it's going to be uh, horizontally in the middle of the background. Vertically, it should be near the top if you look at the picture of a traffic light. Um, so that should also be 50, and we're going to put it on top of the background like that. Okay, that's pretty good. So uh, we are done. I'm going to take this and put back, copy it and put back into our example. Okay. This, this line is getting way too long, so I'm going to break the line in a place that makes sense and make sure that both inputs to check expect start horizontally at the same place. Uh, another thing I need to do is to copy the other definitions I've made in order to make this traffic light back into my main program. Okay, and similarly, we can produce the two other examples. We, in the two other examples, two things are different. The color of the circle is different, and also the vertical position of the circle in the background is different. Okay. Those are the examples. Let's move on to the template for this function. In order to write this template, it's really useful to look at the data definition at the same time. So let's look at the data definition of a traffic light. Again, notice that it says there are three cases. A traffic light is one of those three cases. So when we write the template, Whenever we see that the data definition says one of, the template should use count because we need to distinguish among the three possible cases of what a traffic light could be. This count should have three cases. And like with all counts, each case needs to have a question and an answer. Each question should allow us to tell whether the given traffic light TL is that kind of traffic light, say red or not. So how do we tell if a traffic light is red? That's actually something that uh, there's a function for because it is a matter of comparing strings. If there are two strings we want to compare, then what we can do is to use the function with a funny name, it's called string equal question mark. So a lot of people would pronounce this string equal ha because a question mark is pronounced ha. So here's how this function works. If we ask it, are red and red the same string, it's going to say yes. If we ask it, are green and red the same string, it's going to say false. And it's very sensitive to uppercase and lowercase. So if you ask it, whether these two strings are the same, it's also going to say false. Okay, so this is a function that we're going to be using a lot because we're going to be comparing strings a lot. So here's how the question in our template should go. We should be comparing the input TL against one possible kind of traffic light, or the other, or the other. What about the answers? Well, we might want to use a traffic light, or we might not. Once you've known that the traffic light is red, there's no more information in the traffic light. That's all you need to know and all you can know about the traffic light. So although it is correct in a template to remind us to use the input, the input is in some sense used up. So it will be OK also and more concise, so I will prefer it to just leave the answer completely unfilled in. There's no more reminder. We don't actually need to use the input anymore. We've used it up. All the information is given by the comparison knowing that the traffic light is red. Okay, so that's the template. This is actually the same template that you can use for writing all sorts of different functions that take a traffic light as input. 
Now let's write the function definition. Of course, we should start with a template that we just wrote. So let me make a copy. And now we need to fill in the template. There are three places to fill in. And this is another place where the definition is simply an outcome of weaving together the examples and the template. Because each of these three cases is already figured out for us in the example. So I just need to copy this and put it in the template. These lines are way too long. I need to split them. In general, it's nice to split the question and the answer of each count case onto separate lines. OK. So that's it. Let's test this out. Great. All three tests passed. 